Alright, let's do her. Alright, let's do her. Alright, let's do her. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> What's up guys? We're back with a brand new face paint here. Uh, this time we are doing Dustin Bylard's Charlemagne painting. Um, first off, you're going to be taking the white face paint and you're going to paint your whole entire face as well as your neck and chest area. Today's look is going to consist of a lot of a blending, a lot of different colors, and a lot of different angular shapes. So we need to create the angular jaw that I seriously do not have. But doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a shadow underneath the neck and then fill it in with black. Taking a lime green face paint, this one's from Mayron. you're going to put it around the perimeters of your forehead, down the contours of your cheekbones on both sides. Now taking the dark blue face paint from Mayron as well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the exact same technique as you did before, but this time you're going to do it a little bit farther back to give more of a gradient fill. At this point, I noticed that the angular chin that I made did not have a neck, but I told myself I would fix it later on. Now taking the lime green face paint again, you're gonna create two almond shapes around both eyes. Once you've done that, you're going to go in with a teal face paint and you're going to create shadows and depths within those almond shapes. After you're done with the teal face paint, you're gonna go in with the dark blue face paint and create more depth and darkness around the almond shapes. Now I'm going to define my cheekbones by using the dark blue face paint as well. To define my facial structure even more, I'm going to draw a black line underneath my contour and blend outwards on both sides. Using a small detailed brush and the dark blue face paint, you're going to fill in the tip of your nose. Once that's done, you're going to use the light blue face paint to highlight the right side of the nose. Then after that, take the black face paint and fill in the nostrils while trying not to sneeze and mess up your delicate makeup. Using the white face paint, you're going to highlight the tip of your nose and use black eyeshadow to shade the upper part of the nose. Using the same black eyeshadow, you will then create more depth and shadows in the eye sockets and fill in the eyelid completely. Once you're done with that step, you will shade your cupid's bow with the black eyeshadow as well. Using an orange grease paint and a disposable sponge, you're going to just stipple it around your mouth. Now how I created the fake silicone lips was by using third degree and red pigments and sculpted it onto an acrylic surface and peeled it off once it was dried. Using Prose to attach both upper and lower lips with a Q-tip was the key here. Taking a detailed lip brush and the orange lipsticks, I'm extending the lips outwards making it more cartoonish. Once that's done, using the black eyeshadow again, shade the inner part of the mouth and outer corners. To highlight Cupid's bow, and the cheekbones go back in with the white face paint and a detailed brush. With the deep brown eyeshadow and a fluffy brush, you're going to shade under the eye, bringing it downwards. To achieve the glossy effect in the eyes, you're going to highlight with white face paint above the eyelid and in the inner corners. To get a more vampire slash dead fill, we will take a red colored eye pencil and line our waterline. Now I went and put on my wig, ears, hat, and drew on a heart birthmark off camera as well as applied my bottom eyelashes. Now how I made both sets of eyelashes was by hot gluing strips of black cardboard onto already existing eyelashes that could withstand the weight of these bad boys because they are heavy. To create the clothing, you will draw two lines down the center of the neck, 
and then fill the bigger portion in with black face paint while the inner portion will be filled with random lines or strings in this case that are accented with white dots around the corner. When gluing on the eyelashes, it's best not to glue it straight on the lash line, but right above it, just because these things are so heavy. Now, all you gotta do is glue on your collar and stick in your vampire fangs, and you're ready to go suck the life out of someone tonight. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a big, big, big thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment of what you'd like to see next week, because I'm be coming back with another video next week. Thank you so much again for watching. Now, on to the photos.